She's really ringing. So I feel it on my belly. Uh, the sound, even with a soft, soft stroke, it rings and it rings and it rings and it keeps ringing, still ringing. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, at this point, what we need to do is uh, voice the instrument. Uh, there's another video that I put not too long ago about the octave mandolin, which was bang on. I didn't need to do anything on it, which is like a one-off. We always have to do a bit of something. Uh, so I'm assuming, I didn't check yet, but I'm assuming this one's going to need a bit of work. Uh, just because I feel like it could have a bit more uh, volume. I feel like the amount of airflow is uh, restricted by the size of the aperture at this moment. So. Um, uh, we, I have a program that I use, it's called a Strobosoft Stroke Tuner with a Tap Tune uh, Enable and that's what we're going to be using. So before we go any further, I want to mention that when I started this mandola, I wanted to replicate something from the, the, the 30s. Uh, in the 30s, Gibson had uh, a fellow named Lloyd Lohr that was uh, building mandolins, that the whole mandolin family in fact, and uh, he was tuning the same way. Uh, as I showed you in previous video, he was tuning his plates, uh, the top, bottom, and voicing the instrument as well. The, di the big difference is that uh, uh, back in those days, in the 30s, the concert pitch was at A equaling 431 hertz. Uh, it's been increased uh, sometimes during the Second World War, and I forget the exact cause of it, but it was increased to 440. Now, a lot of the price instrument from Gibson comes from that era from like the, the 29, 28, 30, 29, 30s, uh, the F uh, style mandolins from those uh, years have that sound uh, that's very priced by players. And I was curious as to see if I tune the mandolo the same way, but then increase the, uh, the, the concert pitch on the strings to 440 to be able to play with other players to be in the same concert pitch if we would get something that is close to that. So the back plate was tuned in A equaling uh, 431 and I do have a video about that which I'll leave a link at the end. Uh, when I tuned the top plate I tuned it to 431 as well which is the tone bars inside. I do not have a video of that section but I do have a video of a different instrument uh, tuned in 440 that I will leave a link at the end as well. Uh, so basically what I need to do now is uh, tune my strings to 431 because I want to have the concert pitch of that time and that pressure on the body to be able to tune my aperture to 431. Then once that's tuned, I'm going to increase the pitch of the strings 
to 440 where they are at right now you just heard them at 440 so I'll tune the instrument down to uh, 431 and uh, I'll get you guys that I can little maybe I can do that a little uh, comparative right now so uh, a G so this is actually a C it's not a, a G like I said it's a G on the mandolin but um, on a mandola it's a fifth lower so it's it's a C uh, so now it's tuned in a 431 uh, so all my string tension are at uh, four, uh, eight, uh, 4 331 and then uh, that's how it sounds <laughs> So what we're going to do now is mute the strings because uh, one, once we hit the bridge here uh, with the little mallet, and dead blow hammer, uh, we want the resonance of the body and nothing else ringing. So uh, I'm going to make sure that everything is muted and then we can start figuring out how much we need to remove from the apertures. Okay, so what I'll be using is a Strobosoft uh, Deluxe uh, Strobe Tuner. Uh, it's by Peterson. Um, I also use a little uh, condenser, condenser microphone. Uh, nothing fancy, just enough to pick up the, the tone. And then my tap tune is enabled here. And now I can use my uh, little dead low hammer. So basically this doesn't have any frequency when I hit something. It, it doesn't have any sound to it and that's the best part that that's the part we want to have and then what I'm gonna do is tap on the instrument and see what kind of reading we have so we're at B flat minus 18. So at this point what it means is that uh, uh, at uh, B flat it means uh, A sharp so what my target means that I'm gonna go to A uh, with a perfect note and we're gonna see how it sounds at that point. What I want to do is kind of uh, mirror on each side so I, what I want to do first is kind of bring this here a bit lower change the aspect of it a bit and at the same time it's gonna line up a bit better with the bridge because the intonation got my bridge a bit further down so we'll, we'll start by removing that and test it again So you see, just by dealing with the little points there, we went from uh, A sharp uh, minus uh, 18, and we're already at A uh, plus uh, roughly 40. So what we're going to do now is going to be to slowly remove and finesse the, the uh, actual lengthy bits of it, and make sure everything is nice and symmetrical. And like, see if I see that one is bigger than the other one, or uh, but I was very careful when I made those, so I I am sure that they are very close to symmetrical. Uh, but I'll just ad adjust little bits here, and what I'll do is just use a piece of sandpaper, uh, so probably like a, a 80 or 100, and then I'll put it on the back of a, like I, I could use like a, a mini file, like 
like a straight mini file like this one. Put some rough sandpaper and then just go around here. And that way I can widen, allowing more air. And we only have about 40 cents to go. So that's not a lot. Just by removing those little bits here, that created uh, quite a bit of a change. So uh, we, we want to be careful to not overshoot. So uh, I'll be back and forth. Uh, with the, the computer until I get the proper reading. So something pretty interesting is happening right now. I have to go out for about 3-4 hours. So when I came back, I uh, checked that my string was still uh, to the proper pitch, to have the proper uh, string tension onto the bridge. Um, and then they were out of tune, so I, I retuned my strings, all of them, uh, to, to get the proper string tension. So I don't know the fact of removing wood here uh, kind of... Uh, uh, remove some tension onto the soundboard uh, but it turned out that I was out of fish and I, I, as you will see we went back to A sharp when I tested it again so we were in the A uh, plus 24 I think it was and then uh, going back on it we're back in the uh, A sharp so we're, we'll remove a bit more wood here and I'll show you another way you can do it something else you can use is a little uh exacto knife uh, you have to follow the wood grain so that way you don't end up in the wrong direction and then catching in one of those uh, growth ring lines so what you do is just slowly without putting too much tension with a very sharp blade uh, remove some of that wood and then go the other way when you need to just so you don't end up with a, a big chunk of it coming out uh, I do have like three types of knives that I, I'll be using. Um, this one is very pointy so it helps in the corners. I like the, the shape of this one because uh, it's not as aggressive, although the, the blade is really sharp. And then this one sometimes I, I'll use as well. But those ones are pretty similar. It's also important now that we're widening uh, the, the channel here to get more air out uh, to keep um, the proportions uh, nice. So as we're widening like this section, this uh, bottom section here s seems to be a bit smaller. At this point I'm still uh, not quite close to where I want to be so I still have quite a bit of play. So what I'll do is uh, open up this uh, little round section. For that I'll use my little Dremel tool with this little attachment. I will dial my speed uh, very low just so, so nothing like messy happens and uh, I will hold the body very securely so I can work on it. You also have to remember that the top is spruce so it's soft wood so it goes pretty quickly. So we made some progress, we're at uh, minus 16 cents, so uh, we're going to keep working on it. So at this point I'm just going to use some 120 to sand the inside of the apertures and uh, we should be right on target. Like when I hit, I get uh, minus three to plus three, so uh, we're, we're right on target. Now, I just said that we were right on target. If you remember the beginning of the, beginning of the video, I was aiming more for A. Uh, when you tune your body, you want to get to a, a right, like a, a, a pitch. So it, the, the note doesn't really matter as much as to get to a note. Uh, in this case, it's A sharp. Uh, 
The reason why I'm not going to A is that I would have to open them up quite substantially more than they are right now and I don't want to get to a point that there's not enough restriction to have a proper sound. So how, how do I know that? Well, it's the improvement on the sound already. I got a lot more projection, I got a lot more sustain, it's still ringing. It was ringing quite a bit before, but now it's still, it's still ringing still. So, um, no, it's uh, the bass are coming out. So I'm really happy with that. So just a quick recap at this point. So we have the backboard that's been tuned like it was in the 30s in the A equals 431 Hertz. We have the soundboard tone bars uh, that are tuned the same way like it was in the, uh, in the 30s. And then we just voice the instrument uh, when our string uh, was uh, to 431 Hertz as well. So at this point, this instrument in the 30s uh, if it would have been tuned like that, like Gibson used to do. And at this point, I'm not saying I did it exactly like Gibson. I'm just using the tools that I have to do it as close as possible. Um, and this instrument would have been played probably 10, 15 years until they got to the 1940s, mid 40s, where uh, the, the uh, concert pitch got increased to 440. So at this point, the instrument body never changed. Uh, what people were doing is that they were tuning up their strings to 440s. So at this point, I'm still in 431. And I'll change my tuning to 440 and compare. there you have it so this instrument is the first one that I've made that are as close as possible to what it used to be uh, for the the mandolins and the mandolas of that era uh, I love the sound it's not the last one I'm gonna make I just the actual sound of the body is very very mellow it's warm uh, warmer than if I would have tuned it from from the previous instruments that I built uh, warmer than if it would have been to uh, a 440 I believe so this ended up probably uh, I haven't edited the video but probably ended up being a very long video so if you st uh, stick to the end uh, I'm really thankful for that uh, there was a lot of information and process to be shared in this video so I'm really happy that you stuck around if you're new to my channel I post videos on uh, instrument making so please consider subscribing and until next time I wish you well